Hey, greetings, everybody. It's Marty from OwingsArt.com. That's O-W-I-N-G-S-A-R-T.com. And thanks for stopping by today, and glad, uh, glad you could make time to check out the video. Okay, a couple of topics for today. One, um, kind of social networking on... Uh, uh, and social networking, social networking and your art. That's one topic. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a recent uh, uh, experience I had. And also Tombow colored markers. They're Japanese markers um, and uh, they're pretty neat. And I'll, I, I bought a few and I want to just uh, show you some quick stuff I did with that. And then the third topic is a guy named Chris Ayers. He's an artist who does books um, and art and his books are called The Daily Zoo. And we'll talk about him a little bit at the end of the video. Okay, so let's get started because um, there's lots to cover. All right, social networking. Social networking is cool um, if you're an artist because you can, A, one, get your art out there, to learn from other artists and experience different come in contact with people you would not have ordinarily been able to come in contact with right so in your everyday life you're stuck somewhere but you know the magic of the interwebs and social networking allows you to to encounter people you wouldn't ordinarily encounter so um, I had an experience just recently with an artist named Stacy Crummett that's uh, Stacy and then S-T-A-C-E-Y and then Crummett and I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly C-R-U-M-M-E-T-T Stacy Crummett and she has a Facebook page and it is called Colored Pencils, Graphite and Pastels Colored Pencils, Graphite and Pastels and what uh, what's going on over there at that Facebook page? Well uh, a lot of members, for one thing. So I think there's like 1,400 members there. And um, it's kind of an invite-only page, or you can request membership to be brought on board. But it's for artists and people interested in the artistic process around colored pencils, graphite, and pastels, as you would imagine it might be. Anyway, Stacy invited me over after checking out, I think, one of my YouTube videos uh, right here on the YouTube channel. So um, she invited me over there, which was sweet, and I appreciate the invite. And I went over there and I checked it out. So I like to check stuff out before I join in. And what I found there were all of these artists really interested in, in pencils and graphite and posting their artwork. So if you're an artist and you want to be inspired or you want to look at what others are doing in the world of art, that's a great way to get engaged with them. It's like, you know, you're traveling down that artistic highway and you get off on an off ramp here and from you go from building to building and you see there's great art and you get to engage with the artist. You get to step in to their world for a little while, talk with them, get some ideas, share their enthusiasm for the artistic process and whatever kind of um, medium they're using and, and you learn things and it helps to expand your artistic universe and what happens you become more informed about things and, and just about methods and papers and pencils and paints and inks and just everything um, you can imagine and it's a whole world of mysteries. Art is a mystery, uh, layered in more mysteries, wrapped in mystery, and uncovering it and becoming knowledgeable about it is a life's journey. And it takes time to get there. And so I'm happy whenever I encounter other artists involved or engaged in the artistic process. So social networking can help that. Um, and, and, and it doesn't, you don't have to be afraid to pimp yourself, to pimp your work, to get out there, to promote it, to be a part of it, to engage it. Because think of it this way. I mean, you're an artist, you work at it, you put your life's energy in it, you put yourself, you, you sacrifice to do it. Um, you know, it's a, or maybe it's just a fun hobby, whatever it is. Other people may be inspired and grow by what you put out there, so I always feel good about um, about doing it. I don't feel bad at all that I that I'm sort of out there with it. So I've got a YouTube channel, which which you're obviously tuning in right now, watching. I've got a I've got my own blog site. I've got my own art site, OwingsArt.com. Right. I do stuff on Facebook, Snapchat, wherever you get a chance. Etsy. Um, you know, there's just all these places. Pinterest. Um, that you can, you know, put your art out there. Get get it out there where people can see it. Um, you never know who's going to see your art and go, "Hey, I really love that." And that's the kind of art uh, that inspires me or or that I'm interested in. And it, and if you're a commercial artist, it's an interesting way to to get your art, art sold. So 
Um, that's about four minutes and 55 seconds on the topic of social networking and why it's interesting to get involved in it. So um, so let's talk a little bit about the Tombo markers. Well, before I do that, let me back up and thank Stacy again because uh, I think it was it's nice when another artist says, hey, I recognize you're doing something artistic or for the art community and I want to invite you in and I want to share your work. And so that was really nice and I really appreciate it. So shout out to Stacy for for recognizing that and just I really appreciate it. All right, so the Tombow markers, they're Japanese, boom. They're made in Japan, they're alcohol based, uh, they come in like 96 colors, uh, they're fairly excellent. I'll talk about why I say fairly instead of just really, really excellent because I've had experience with the Copic markers and the Copic markers are really, really excellent. So when you buy a Tombow uh, colored brush marker, what you get is you get this marker and it has two ends to it. And you can see there's a graphic on here, one here, oops, one here and one here. And that kind of denotes what kind of tips are you gonna get on either end of this pen. So you move to this end, pop that off, you're gonna get this marker like felt tip marker pen, um, kind of like a Sharpie end on it. Close that up there. And if you go to this end, you're gonna get the brush end. So you got kind of that finer tip brush in and this behaves like a brush and I'll show you, show you some drawings I did with this. The one thing uh, I will say about these is they're not as pigment rich as the Copic markers. Um, you can't change out the tips or the ink in these Tombos so but um, you're also going to buy a Tombow marker for $2.99 each, sometimes on sale for as little as $1.99. A Copic marker uh, is going to cost you considerably more than that, like on the order of $6.50 to $7 a marker. But again, you can refill those tips and uh, the, the ink and, the, and change the tips and all that. The other thing, the other knock here, boom. Great that they tell us a number. Um, Japanese folks, if you're watching, um, you got to give us a name of the color here. Okay, it's just handy to have a quick reference. To, if this is a, you know, a brown or a carmine, or whatever the hell this color is, it's, it's a brown. I'm not sure. I mean, yes, you can look at the tip of this and go, well, it looks like a light brown or maybe a medium brown, but it's just really nice to have the name right along with the number. So if you don't have the number yet, if you don't have the you know the name on here, you got to go to a color chart, and then you can find out what this number corresponds to in terms of the name of the color that Tombo has given it. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about the mark making with these and how they held up. So I I bought uh, seven of these, and I um, I put them uh, to the test here. Well, sort of a test. I mean, I made a mark with them and watched how the pigment came out and. Do, did a little drawing. Here's one a sphere I did, and then this, this leaf here I did, and then I tried. I, there's a blender. It comes. There's a colorless blender you can buy, and so I used that, and it worked pretty good. Um, one of the ways I can tell that the the ink is not coming out like flowing really hard, or but you know that it's uh, a bit weaker maybe than the Copic is that if you look on the back, there's no bleed through or very little bleed through with these. Whereas if you use a Copic marker, you get a pretty heavy bleed through. Okay, so that leads me to the drawing I did with this. And that is this drawing I did of a moose after an artist, which I'll talk about in a minute, called his name is Chris Ayers. But there's the moose. And <laughs> I just kind of love these cartoon characters that Chris Ayers does so um, this is uh, after one of his drawings I I did uh, take some artistic license with it and I added some things in and um, you know this this hanging grass because in Minnesota I've had the chance to see a few moose and they like to hang out in the swampy areas with the cattails and they often come up with this grass and stuff on their horns just kind of interesting um, on these antlers Anyway, um, this is a moose, and he was fun to draw, and I had a good time doing it. Um, so who's this guy? Who's this character, Chris Ayers, and why are you copying his work, Marty? And what the hell? Is that okay to do that? Well, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I think it's absolutely too okay and okay to copy other artists' work. I mean, it's your own variation of that work, really, because you're never going to make an exact uh, carbon counterfeit copy of that work unless you have nefarious plans for it. So that brings me to a couple of points. One, if you do copy an artist's work, the first thing to remember is to always give that artist credit. Give him a shout out, talk about 
their art, put it on there. This is after Chris Ayers. This is his work or whatever, and I copied it for artistic purposes. Um, the second thing is don't sell it. It's not your original work. I mean, you're copying it. Yes, it has some degree of originality insofar as you did it, but don't sell it as your original work. Okay, so that, that's a no-no. And if you didn't know this, and most artists don't, I happen to know it because I'm involved uh, in, 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 in copyright and IP law and things like that, but if you do somebody else's, uh, when an artist does a work, an art, original artistic work, it is automatically copyrighted in this country. You don't have to file paperwork or pay a fee. You just automatically um, uh, get copyright protection in the United States. Okay, and now a little bit about Chris Ayers, the artist uh, who's just uh, pretty inspirational. I mean, to me personally, I I think he's awesome, um, and I think his art's awesome, and the guy can draw anything. Um, does not ju not just cartoon, not just comic-like characters, but um, all kinds of stuff. J.J. Um, Abrams in the foreword of Chris's book talks about um, how he can't, char uh, can't uh, characterize Chris's work or put it into a box and that's kind of the way I feel but his cartooning of animals is devastatingly humorous, funny and just really cool and that's what inspired me. <clears throat> I happen to come through Chris Ayers speaking of social networking and how things work and I don't know Chris Ayers personally, I should say that up front, but I came through him through another YouTube artist who I admire and, and look at his YouTubes a lot, and his name is Scott Robertson. So Scott Robertson, and you can check out that, Scott Robertson Design, or I'm just, if you Google Scott Robertson YouTube, you'll find his, um, uh, his YouTube channel, and he does a lot of really great uh, uh, spaceships and Macs and trucks and vehicles, kind of futuristic stuff, um, and just really great sketching. And Chris is just a uh, um, Chris and Ro um, Scott Robertson are friends. So anyway, Chris Ayers. Here's his very first book, and I believe this book was published in 2008. This happens to be a first edition, so scores. Um, this is the first edition of Chris's book, and Chris's book is excellent. Um, and I'm going to talk about all of his books here in a second, or this book in particular, but he's got a number of books. This is his first, The Daily Zoo. He's got The Daily Zoo 2. He's got The Daily Zoo Goes to Paris. And then he's got a sketchbook, which I haven't seen yet, but I think it invites the artist of any age to participate in it, which is really another cool thing. The really cool thing about, uh, uh, one of the cool things about Chris Ayer's journey is, um, it, it was born of a very difficult time. In the mid-2000s, I think it was 2005, April uh, to be exact, I think Chris was diagnosed with a pretty devastating form of cancer, leukemia. After going through all his treatments and, and recovering, he found that being able to do a drawing a day kind of combined both his love for animals and drawing into one sort of inspirational uh well, I guess a way for him to cope and just express himself and to kind of take each day as the gift that it was. So um, I have tagged a few pages in, in this particular book, The Daily Zoo, that I wanted to share that are some of my favorites. Now, although you may not know Chris Ayers, you may know some of his drawings. So the prickly puffer is one of Chris's really cool drawings, in my opinion, and one of the cool drawings. One of the first drawings I ever saw of Chris's, and I just thought this was just a wonderful uh, drawing. Just f his characters are are full of life and just really cool. So uh, let's see, I have another one here. This is this dinosaur. Just the expression on this character's face is just just great. Um, and Chris knows how to capture that perfect and just animals in general. Here's the Christmas skunk, the stinky Christmas skunk, and it just. It's just awesome. It's just really, really fun. So what Chris did was during his recovery period, he just started doing a drawing every day. Here's some from February of 07, and they're all in the book. And he just kind of goes through and, and does a sketch each day. And I just thought it would be great to share some of Chris's work from this book, The Daily Zoo, with all of you. One cool thing about Chris for me personally is that he's also a Minnesota guy. He lives out in L.A. now and works for, um, you know, design houses and stuff like that probably some hollywood stuff because jj abrams actually wrote one of the the forward in this book so um and i think chris is doing really well now so that's that's another good thing but um 
just uh, an awesome book by an awesome guy with an awesome journey to art. And if you can, check out, and I'll post a little link uh, to his website and stuff, but check out Chris Ayers, uh, design.com. He's just a fascinating guy. And go out and buy some of these books. They'll just really inspire you. Like I think like they've inspired me. Hopefully it's like they've inspired me to just take a little time each day to, even if it's just a simple sketch or something, to go ahead and do a drawing and, um, and share it. So I hope you get some time to draw today. It's a long day.